Shalom, all praise to Hal Bashim Yah Shah, the blind city apostles of GMS, this is Amna wa Allah, coming at you another video. In this video, I'm going to be focused on the book of Acts, the 18th chapter, and the third verse, going to um, the Apostle Paul and Aquila and Priscilla, which were, in hus which were a husband and wife, a couple. They were Israelites. And how the Apostle Paul and Priscilla and Aquila, how they, um, had occupations, they had jobs, you know, just like we do now. Like how they was calling, they was calling us bumites, bums, saying we don't have jobs. We got jobs, man. And guess what? We make more than y'all guys, man. You know? Well, let's go to Acts 18 and 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, Italy with his wife Priscilla. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. So if Claudius commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. And Aquila and Priscilla who were born in Pontus. Let's see where Pontus is located. Strong's G, 4193. Ponticas. 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 And it says, belong with the Pontus, born in Pontus. Let's see if we can get deep into it. I'm, I'm just going to come back here. I wasn't going to Pontus, but you know, I'm not. And I'm going to the history of it. That's going to make the show longer. So I'm just going to focus on Italy. It says Acts 18 and 2. And found a certain Jew named Aquila born in Pontus. Lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. And where is Rome located? Rome was located in Italy. Okay. So they came from Italy. Why? Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. Which means that Aquila and Priscilla had to have been Israelites. And came unto them. So the Apostle Paul came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them. So the Apostle Paul was of the same craft. Look at the word craft. Homo technos. Strong's G, 3673. Hamatechnos. 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 I see the word techno or technology there. Hamatechnos. Practicing the same trade or craft of the same trade. So the Apostle Paul's of the same trade as Aquila and Priscilla. So the Apostle Paul himself was a tent maker. He had a job. Okay? For they were for for by their occupation, they were tent makers. So they were of the same craft. So the Apostle Paul worked as well as Aquila and Priscilla Aquila and Priscilla. They were tent makers. Okay? That was their job. That was their career. Let's continue on. This is from the website artbible.info this is the book of Sirach chapter 40 verse um verse 18 Acts 40 I'm sorry Sirach 40 and 18 or Ecclesiasticus 40 and 18 to labor and to be content with that a man hath is a sweet life so it's a sweet life to work and to be happy with what it is that you have you don't have that in this world okay to labor and to be content with what a man has, that is a sweet life. To be content with what it is that you have. Okay? But we don't have that in this world. Because in this world, you never have enough. You live check by check. You know, if you miss one paycheck, you, you asked out. You're done. Can you imagine how much struggling and hard work you got to do? How You got to cut back on certain things. You know? Because we're living in hell. But he that finds the treasure is above them both. So when they find the treasure, it's above them both. And what is the treasure that we found through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yashah? The scriptures. Or rather, Yahweh Shem Yashah found us and gave us this treasure. Let me jump down. This is what I meant to start from. Verse 26. I'm sorry, verse 28. My son, lead not a beggar's life, right? You don't want to live a beggar's life. You don't want to be the kind of person that 
begging for the crumbs at somebody else's table. To have a seat at somebody else's table. You wanna be a person who, you don't wanna be a person whose life is based off of what it is that they can get from another person. That's not what it is that you want. You know, it's leading the beggar's life because that person is the one that ultimately makes decisions and have power over you. Because you're the one that needs them in order to maintain your life. You're the one that needs them in order to maintain your survival. And that person can easily strip that from you. So scripture to say, my son, lead not a beggar's life. I mean, think about it. You're driving on the highway. You got people on the highway with signs asking for food. You're walking through the neighborhood, the same guy sitting there on the corner, the same woman sitting there on the corner asking for money, asking for change. And that's humiliating. You know, you just imagine. You got people now with, with jobs that got money. They may need money from someone else and may feel ashamed to ask another person for money. How much more a homeless person, a homeless person, a beggar, who hasn't bathed in days, who hasn't changed their clothes in, clothes in days, or probably haven't eaten in a day or a couple of days. Can you imagine how much of a beggar's life they're living? For better it is to die than to beg. It's better to die than to beg. It's better for you to be dead than you be a bum on the street. You're better off dead. The life of him that depended on another man's table is not to be counted for a life. So if your life depends on another man's table, it's not to be counted for a life. So all the people tomorrow, all they want to see at the table, the crumbs from the table, that's not so horrible way to live. Your life is dependent upon another. That's not a life, man. That's not a life. For you to be the person that wants somebody else to feed you for your, to survive, for your survival. That's not a life to live. You're better off dead, man. That's humiliating. You know? For he polluted himself with... A, that's why you got people out there that kill themselves, man. They get divorced or got to pay excessive amounts of money in child support and they don't know what to do. They off themselves. A lot of divorced men commit suicide. Look it up. Mainly white men. Which is Edomites, Esau. So-called white people. For he polluted himself with other men's meat. Other men's substance. But a wise man well nurtured will beware thereof. Right? A wise man is well nurtured will beware thereof. Will beware of living a beggar's life. And they'll go out and find ways to make money. Begging is sweet in the mouth of the shameless. People that have no shame, they like to beg. But in his belly there shall burn a fire. Right in your belly there shall burn a fire. There shall be pain. Because though you're shameless in begging, though you may be shameless in begging, in your belly there shall burn a fire. The reason why it's going to burn a fire is because you're the one that's going to be undergoing that, you're the one that's going to be undergoing that pain. Because at the end of the day, you still need that other person to survive. You know? You're still going to um, need the other person to survive. So though you may be shameless in begging, some people out there don't mind begging. When I was younger, I had, a, I had a friend I was in elementary school with. He used to go around asking people for money. Like like it was a joke. He had no shame. He just laughed. You got a dollar, miss. You got two dollars. He was a, uh, from Jamaica. I don't get his name. I forget his name. It's in my yearbook somewhere, my elementary yearbook. But he had no shame. But a person that's an actual beggar who doesn't have any shame, begging may be sweet in their mouth, but in their belly, they shall burn a fire. And the reason why it's going to burn a fire because at the end of the day, you still need that other person to survive. Because if that person decides not to feed you, you're going to go hungry. You know? So in your belly, it's going to burn a fire, man. It doesn't mean your actual stomach. It means in your mind. You're going to burn the fire. It's going to be what? Affliction. Which fire represents affliction? Isaiah 48 and 10. It speaks about the furnace of affliction. Let's keep going. And that's the, and the point I wanted to get to was when it said, um, but a wise man will nurture will beware thereof. A wise man, wise man is well nurtured will beware of, a, of the life of a beggar. And he'll go out and find ways to make money. Which is why the Apostle Paul was what? A tent maker. He had a job. He had to find a way to maintain, um, uh, he had to find a way to um, maintain his needs to the best of his ability. And though he did get money from the churches, he still worked, like we do. Second Thessalonians 3, it said, For even when we were with you, this we commanded, this we commanded you. But if, <clears throat> let's talk about verse 9, Second Thessalonians 3 and 9. The whole thing is good, but um, I'm from verse 9. Matter of fact, verse 8. Second Thessalonians 3 and 8. Neither did we eat any man's bread for not. Eat any man's bread for nothing. Because you had people out there 
that gave things to the disciples, that gave things to the apostles, that gave things to those that, that was in the ministry. Food, raiment, they lodged them, meaning they gave them places to stay. Because bread doesn't necessarily have to be actual bread. It means that your substance. So they didn't eat it for nothing, but wrought with labor and travail night and day. It wasn't like they were just living off, living off those that was living off of those that were believers that were given um, different uh, resources to those that was pushing the word. It wasn't like they were just living off of them. They wrote with labor. They mean the disciples. They wrote with labor and travail night and day. They worked. That we might not be chargeable to any to any of you. It's got a word chargeable. Epibareo. To put a burden upon, to load, to be burdensome. They didn't want to be a burden unto them, so they still worked. They wouldn't be charged with unto them or be a burden unto them. Yeah, we need this, yeah, we need that, we need that, we need, need this. They didn't want to be a burden unto them, the Apostle Paul and those other men that were in the ministry. They didn't want to be burdened unto them, so they worked night and day. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Not because they, we have not power, because they had the power to get money from them. They had the power to get money from them. They, they had the power to get money. All right? Tights and so forth. They had the power to get them things from them. Garments and other food, other things that they may have needed. They had the power to because why? The Apostle Paul and the men that was teaching the truth, they was above them. They were the ones that the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Shah set up to teach the word. So they had the power to get different a aspects of substance from the, um, from the followers in the various cities. All across Asia Minor. Various countries all across Asia Minor. They had power to get their substance. But to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. But they worked to be an example unto them to follow them. Say, see, we're not going to be a burden unto you. Not because we don't got the power to get any of your substances. Because we do. But to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. That's why they worked with labor and travail night and day. To follow, so that you could follow their, um... So you can follow the blueprint, so to speak, that they were laying down, that you got to work. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So if you don't work, you don't eat. You have to work in order for you to eat, in order for you to survive, in other words. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but busybodies. You got to work busybodies. Strong's G, 4020. Perier Godzamai. Perier Godzamai. Perier Godzamai. To bustle about uselessly. To busy oneself about trifling, needless, useless matters. Used apparently by a person of officiously inquisitive about other affairs. So people were about others' affairs. So they were busybodies. They were involved in useless matters. And they were inquisitive or inquired about other people's affairs. They dealt with needless, useless matters. They were busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Yahweh Shah, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. So they had to work and eat their own bread. They had to go out and work instead of being busybodies in other men's matters. Now if you can't work for that reason, then you just can't work. Maybe you got some kind of sickness or whatever the case may be. That's understandable. You know, but we have to work. Maybe you got some brothers that's well off and don't got to work. The apostles really didn't have to work, but they did. Okay, the scriptures speak about muzzling not the ox, right? Because if you muzzle in the ox while the ox is plowing the field, how the ox, because the ox can eat of the grains of the field while the ox is plowing the field. But if you muzzle the ox, you stop the ox from being able to eat. In this case, you muzzle not the ox, meaning what? You suppose that the person that's pulling that plat pushing that's pulling the person that's um plowing the field, the plow represents doing the work. You're not supposed to muzzle them, meaning they're supposed to eat off the work that they're doing. The same way our ox would eat the grains of the field when they're plowing the field. If we're pushing that if we're um using the spiritual plow, spiritually plowing the earth by pushing his word, by sowing the seeds of knowledge, the seed which is the word, pursuing the book of um, I believe it's the book of Luke 8 and 11 
if we're pushing that spiritual plow, pursuing Luke 9, 62, and sowing that seed, which is the word, pursuing Luke 8, 11, you're not supposed to muzzle the ox. Meaning what? We're supposed to be able to eat off of the work that we're doing. Meaning you're supposed to pay tithes. This is what the Apostle Paul is saying. You're supposed to give us of your resources. The Apostles really aren't supposed to work. You know, they're supposed to live off of the work. Their job is supposed to be just push the truth and that's that. And those that are um, believers, that are followers of them, of them, are supposed to look out for them. So with that, I'm going to close. All the brothers learn something. With that, I'm going to say, Oh, praise the Habashim HaShah, Double Line City Apostles, GMS, Shalom.